Okay, in today's video, we wanted to talk about an ingrain joint or a face frame joint. Very problematic, and you're watching this probably because you want to learn how to fix or either do a strong end grain joint. The reason they're, they're problematic is you're trying to connect an end grain, which it doesn't glue up very well, and laminate that to another surface, kind of like so. If you're making a face frame for a cabinet, uh, two connecting pieces, you know, you're going to run into this. And I'm just going to show you, and Tara's going to show you, how to make one of these and make it pretty strong uh, and fairly cost, easily and cost effectively. Uh, the way I recommend for people if you don't want to do full on jointing, where I mean making a mortise and tenon for example, and that's going to be your strongest joint. Uh, really the a pocket hole joint is a very, very quick and dirty solution to making that joint. And the Craig pocket hole jig, this video is, is demonstrating that end grain joint, but I am gonna talk about the Craig pocket, pocket hole jig, a little bit of a tool or tools review. Um, we've, I've, this has been used a ton in our shop. I've yeah. had it for years. Yeah. Um, it's been very good. Craig makes a lot of jigs, and if you are building things, uh, you want to make things, this is one of those tools, and jigs in general are one of those things that you can get away with not having the best saws, for example, or, or specialized um, jointing equipment or jigs. Uh, the, the, you know, jigs like this are very cost effective mm -hmm. and the Craig makes a very, very good quality bang for the buck. I, I don't think there's another company out there that really, that beats them. Um, they're, they're very solidly made. Um, uh, unfortunately, a lot of this stuff is all plastic bodies, but uh, you know, your, your guides are, are metal. Um, your clamp is metal, you know, the, the main components of it are, are built really well and, and the other fluff stuff is, you know, the, the, the housing, that type of thing is plastic. So to keep their costs down, I'm sure that's why they do it. But, you know, they are very caught. This, this jig, Canadian, Canadian Ruples is uh, $130, I think. And I'm not sure where our, <clears throat> excuse me, for our U.S. counterparts, uh, but it's going to be cheaper. Mm -hmm. And and uh, uh, you'll hear me say that in a lot of tool reviews or a lot of our videos. Um, there is a big difference. But we'll put a link in for the Canadian buyers and also our U.S. Uh, counterparts on yeah. Amazon.com. That'll um, be helpful. Yeah. So your jig is is a necessity as far as I'm concerned in, in any whether you're a large shop or a small shop, this is a tool that's gonna to get used. It comes with a drill bit that has a stop collar on it. It's been a very good bit. I've done hundreds of pocket holes with this and it's still the original bit. Uh, it comes with the extended driver, which you need for doing pocket holes because it's at a, it's, you're at a much, um, you're at a very low degree of angle. So the extended bit is, is kind of a necessity. You can't get away with a short bit, but it does come with that. Uh, what else? Your Craig pocket hole uh, plugs. Um, once you've made your pocket hole, and we'll go into this a bit further in the video, we'll show you, but the plugs, you can buy them in a pack. They fit inside the hole. You can glue them in, finish it off, and give yourself a finished surface. Uh, but if you're doing it on a face frame, let's say on a cabinet, for example, you don't need that. You can just put them in and then it's going to be hidden on the backside. So just another little thing that you can try, to, you can make those on your own, but I, I, it's always a time effective thing to cost for me when, when we're making things. It's a lot of energy for a fairly inexpensive item. Mm -hmm. uh, glue. A staple, and in if you're making stuff, you're gonna have to have a good wood glue. And we've used a variety of different brands. Yeah, yeah, I have I have used a number. Um, pretty much a staple, and I think you'll see in a lot of shops is a Type Bond Three. The water, and I use the waterproof version. Uh, I have no complaints with it. It's it's uh, an amazing glue, and glues have come a long way in the past. 10, 15 years mm -hmm. especially, but even further back than that. But the, the new glues are are f yeah, pretty forgiving. They're they're really, 
they're a very, very good product. Uh, it's clamps. Um, I guess I'll start. You know, I, I I use a lot of different clamps. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do a separate video on just clamps, parallel okay. clamps, pipe clamps. You know, you you ha you, you name it. Um, this is a fest tool. It's a speed clamp. I use the bejeebas out of this. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just to even in this application, just to to hold the uh, the pocket jig down in place. It does have a flat area on the back end of it. So I'll just put it down on a table, put my quick clamp in, and that's not going anywhere. And that's that fast. And then it just quick releases. These are also awesome. Like right now I have a sacrificial top on my table, but I have dog holes in, in this table underneath and run it in at a dog hole. You just put it in at an angle and clamp something down to the surface. Uh, it just very, very well made. Obviously it's a fest tool, not the cheapest clamp, no. but well worth the money. You don't need 18 pairs of these. Just, I, I have two and Yes, it'd probably be nice to have a couple more every once in a while, but really, yeah, yeah <laughs> really you get away, I get away with just a couple of them. Uh, the Craig standard long jaw clamps, I, to me it's kind of a must. You, you gotta have a couple pairs of these kicking around uh, just because of the length of the clamp that you can get to and there's a lot of areas that you're gonna need to get into the clamp things that are really awkward. Uh, these are like your old style vice grip. You gotta adjust them. Um, I, I've used these a ton. Again, a good quality clamp, but it's that constant adjustment is my only beef with those. And fortunately, uh, Craig has come out with uh, their Automax clamp, which I did get this fairly recently. I think these have only been out for about a year, year and a half, but uh, phenomenal this is worth all the money and really looking back i've had these for quite a while the standard ones um i don't there wasn't much of a price difference so uh, what you can i prefer oh, that one the, over. by by far yeah. this this is an auto clamp or an auto adjusting clamp and what I'm, what that means is that basically whatever thickness of wood you're trying to clamp you can you don't have to adjust it with a knob in the back you can just grab onto it and get your get your clamp wow. and it automatically sets it so if you've got an inch and a half piece or a three quarter you're not constantly messing with that screw and trying to get your adjustment size where it does adjust though is the clamping pressure now i put them pretty tight but you can soften it up there's an adjustment screw in the back you probably can't see it there but you just turn this in turn it out and that's your adjustment for how much pressure you're putting on the clamp again i put them down pretty tight yeah but in certain situations softer wood you don't want as much clamping pressure or you just might not want to because it's an awkward position and if you're trying to to get it to close if it's too tight it might you might not have enough strength in your hand to get it closed but yeah. um yeah just amazing buy we're going to put a link in for these very good quality as usual with craig stuff uh can't can't really beat it for the money i, I think that these were about 60 60 dollars canadian and for i one? for one yeah. oh wow but i think they're even cheaper on amazon i think they're around 40 dollars on yeah i, I oh. kind of scooped on it i bought it at a local tool store and uh, yeah, sometimes you just, it's, you can find better deals. So I just didn't want to wait. So um, aside from that, your standard, your standard quick clamps, speed clamps. <clears throat> um, not a lot to say about these, but the better quality speed clamps are worth the money. We've, we've bought the knockoff ones. They were cheap and they were cheap for a reason. Yeah. There, yeah, you kind of get what you pay for in a speed clamp. I've used these a lot too. And uh, yeah, the, I, this is kind of a staple too. It's like having a drill in a small shop if you're me, or having an impact gun. It's one of those things you just, you gotta have these. You're gonna need them. Mm -hmm. uh, spend a little extra money. The Irwins are really good as far as I'm concerned. For bang for buck, um, mm -hmm. they're they're good quality. They've held up really well. They keep sliding good. The good clamping pressure. You know, just uh, uh, all around decent tool. Good investment, and you're gonna need lots of them. So in different sizes. Yeah. So uh, yeah. And aside from that, um, spacer blocks. I I keep a bin of spacer blocks 
just random size wood pieces that are small that I can use for space and for doing reliefs or setting drawer fronts or a number of different things. Um, I do have a spacer block kit. This one's particularly made by Veritas, which make good quality tools if you have any experience with them. These are a good thing to have around for tooling. Um, the spacer box are really good to have, like setting your, your saw height, uh, setting router depth, those types of things. But uh, unfortunately, they don't come in a double pack. You have to buy two of them to have duals. And that's a lot of the application that I use a spacer block in. I, I need two at a time. And a lot of times I want to be able to clamp it in, in place. So just my suggestion, if, if you're getting into this and you're not sure what to kind of keep and not keep, and everybody has a tendency to keep scrap wood by the boatloads. Yeah. Uh, I go, I, I do, and I got to force myself to stay away from that. But uh, um, some little blocks of equal size spacing blocks and scrap pieces, always good to have. I keep a bin of them and I'm always grabbing those and using them. So it doesn't cost anything. You can just keep your scrap ends even right on them what sizes they are. So it's an easy reference. You know, you could probably be a lot more organized than I am with it, but I just throw them in a bin and I just find equal ones when I need them. But I use them all the time and it's free or, you know, just off of scraps. So aside from that, we're just going to go real quick into Tara's going to make the pocket holes. We're going to do show you uh, how to put together the face frame or, or a joint, end grain joint like that. And it's pretty straightforward, so stay tuned. So first you're going to place your piece. And, and I always make a quick reference mark when you're doing your joints. So you, if you have multiple pieces, you're going to know which side you want to put your pocket hole screw on. So Tara's just going to clamp it in. And we're going to put two in this one. It. And you want to pump it a little bit like Terry is just to clear out the chips. If you have the vacuum hooked up to it, which is for this attachment, if you have the vacuum hooked up, you're not going to get so much of this. It really does work very well. I just don't have the vacuum running because it's too loud and it'd be obnoxious in the video. But that is a good, and it does work really well. So you don't necessarily have to pump it like that when you're using the vacuum attachment. So next we're just gonna, we're gonna do a, what's called sizing, and that's pre-gluing this surface a little, this end grain surface a little bit. And we'll do that off camera, but we'll, we'll show it when we come back. And when you size it, all you wanna do is let it sit till it basically tacks up. You don't want it fully dry, but you don't want it wet either. And what that does is it helps once you add your glue to it, when you do laminate it and screw it together, it helps bond that end grain surface in. We pre-sized this just to speed up the video a little bit. I'm not sure if you can see it all that well in this, this angle. Basically, you just want to put a little bit of glue on here so it's opaque. You can see a little bit of the grain through and leave it till a point that it's tacky. And, and that's going to help when you laminate, when you add your glue in like Tara's going to do right here. So we'll put a bead on and be generous with this. Tara's put a little, well, yeah, a good amount. That's pretty generous. This You're going to get some squeeze out from this. We always keep a damp cloth around just to take off excess. So you're gonna seat this down and flush it up to where you want the joint to be. And basically, I've set a clamp up on the back. So what you wanna do is support wherever you're screwing into. Because what happens with these, with pocket hole screws is they wanna push when you do screw two items together. So like if you're doing a cabinet, connection one face to another. You want to support whatever side you're screwing through, give the other side support so it stays in position and, and you get a good flush. You can line it up really well and you keep it nice and flush. So I put, as you can see, this is where the extended clamp is kind of nice. You can do this closer to the edge um, or if you're doing longer pieces, you could do them on another corner. Now the auto clamp, you just want to put it in on then overlapping the two joints. And what that's gonna do is hold it securely in place on your face to give you a nice flush 
facing too. So now Tara's just gonna put the screws in. Oh, you're going backwards. Eventually she got the screw in. There. And Let's try another one. Okay, that one went a bit better. Yeah. So when you do that, you can hear that the impact, once you start to hear it really clicking on your impact, that's pretty much your stopping point. You don't want to overdrive them and strip out the hole, but you don't want to make it not tight enough that the joint's not tight. As you can see, there's your, there's your, screw, your squeeze out. So with the damp cloth, you just take off your excess squeeze out. And then I always keep around a little bin of, of it's basically like sawdust flour. It's very fine sawdust. It's, and I just collect it off my dust collector or what have you. And we'll just put a little bit on there and just rub it in to the joint. And that's almost going to make that, once you sand this out, it's almost going to make that joint invisible. How's that look? Yeah, you just rub it in. Don't be scared to. Push it in. And if you do have a little bit of gapping or something, if it's very small, what the wood glue, the wood glue will expand the wood and it's gonna hide that joint anyway. But again, you'll have to come back over and sand this a bit, either to flush it up if it is out a little bit or just for finishing purposes to, to flush it up and make it nice and smooth and clean. Uh, you don't want any glue residue on there. If you go to stain it, it's gonna show. And then you just take it apart and repeat on the back side too. Don't, don't just leave it sit on, on the table because you'll have glue residue underneath it. And just give it a quick wipe on the back side and just push that Flour, sawdust flour, it's very, very fine sawdust. So you don't want to use anything that's it's bulky, chunky. chunky. Yeah. You just you want a very, very fine. I typically pull this off after I use my drum sander, which leaves a very fine sawdust. Um, but if you have a dust collection on your orbital sander, for example, that's gonna work well too. That's beautiful. This is how easy it really is. Right now we've Tara's pocket hole screwed this together. It's got a, a lamination of joint in there. We've sized it. It's, it, that's pretty strong. It's, mm. it's pretty, you're gonna have to really make an effort to break that. It's gonna break on the wood grain and not the lamination line. In this scenario, I, 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 I would assume and I would almost bank on that it, it wouldn't break in the joint. So you, you, there's you, easy, very, uh, what user-friendly way to to make a very very strong joint now to finish it off like I talked about earlier you have the Craig plugs you want to glue them first yeah course. you want to put a little glue on them and then just insert them into the surface and one thing you do want to watch is like you can see with this green if you pick through the bin you can get a, a, a very closely matching green when you need to but you want to add a little glue to them shove them into the holes and then once that dries up you know don't even let it totally dry up give it about 10 minutes at the most to to uh, set up and if you sand this off and while it's still kind of setting up your your sawdust from your sander is is going to fill in any little gapping or or little holes in cracks you know spacing if there is any but the craig they, they do fit in really well. And once you sand that out flush, you, you hardly will even see it, especially if you take a little bit of time and try and match onto the surface. Yeah. And really, it's that easy. So thank you for watching. We hope that this helps you. If, you, if you're looking at buying any of these tools, if you click on our links down below, I'm not gonna lie about it. We do get an affiliate commission on that and it does help us in our production of these reviews or these videos that we make and I hope you uh, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you take a little bit of this information and a little bit of confidence away and do this yourself because it really is a very very easy way to, to make a very strong joint thanks for watching bye, -bye.